In this video with the On King, I'm going to show you how to honor your Oskis. And we'll talk about different skills that may help you with this. So an introduction to the Oskis. This is kind of how I personally have had it at my school. Yours may be a little bit different, but it seems like this is kind of the normal standard for medical school. So you'll do a 15-minute history and physical, and then you get 10 minutes to do the write-up. And the write-up, you're going to write the history, the physical. You're going to write your number one diagnosis, number two, number three diagnosis. And for each of those diagnoses, you'll give three history findings and three physical findings that support that diagnosis. And those can be positive or negative findings. And you don't necessarily have to put three findings down for each of those, but you can, up to three. And then lastly, you'll write the test that you would order to further um, diagnose this patient. So my first recommendation is first aid CS. It looks like this. It's it's a very useful thing to get started with. It does have some downsides. I'll talk about that in a second. But basically, it'll go through a case with you, and there's mini cases or there's big cases. And it'll give you symptoms of a patient, the age, the, the gender, and then you can kind of think it through and test yourself and see whether or not you were able to come up with a list similar to theirs. It just kind of gives you a general thing. It's really helpful to get started because it gives you an idea of what sorts of things you can be looking at. Now, there's a ton of cases in here. I would recommend just doing the ones for your rotation that line up with that rotation. So if you're on ob gyn you would just do things like vaginal bleeding, uh, abdominal pain may be relevant, pregnancy, things like that. Whereas if you're on a general surgery rotation, then you would definitely want to do abdominal pain, but you may also want to do thyroid and other things like that could be thrown in there. So it's a good place to start. Now, the second thing I would recommend is using Step 2 CS, make a list. A list of all of the possible diagnoses that you really need to have in your head as you're walking into this OSCE. And then also make a list of the different tests that you would order for those. So what I do is I get a piece of paper and I write it down. So I get appendicitis on one side and I just copied this from step two CS, a couple things that you would order potentially for appendicitis. Now, this is a problem with step two CS is that they just give you a huge list of tests to order and it's not necessarily logical. You're not going to shotgun approach a, a, a patient and I'm guessing where you're at in the OSCEs, if you're just shotgunning like that, you're going to get marked down because that's not how you would do it in real life. So just be aware of that. They give you a nice list, but you kind of need to be able to think through which one are you going to do first. Like with appendicitis, you're probably going to do the ultrasound before you do the CT. Um, so then, uh, you know, another list here, we'll just do gallbladder. You write down a couple things that you may need to know, small bowel obstruction, same thing. That way you just have these tests and these diagnoses on your mind as you're walking into it. And so I usually make this, I study a couple days for the OSCE, not a lot. Because usually during the rotation, you're actually practicing this more than you think you are. Um, but I will get a piece of paper, and like the day or two before, I'll make a big list from Step 2 CS. I'll try to start thinking through some cases. And I have that piece of paper so that the morning of the OSCE or the afternoon of, I'll read through that list really quick just so that it's fresh in my mind. And the most important step here is your history. Your history is everything for that write-up. 15 minutes is super fast to do a history and physical, but 10 minutes to write it all up is even faster. And here's what I would recommend. I started doing this just recently, and I found that it's way easier. It makes things go much smoother, and my grades have been better because of it. So you're gonna, you get your piece of paper that you're going to write on during your OSCE. You're going to write your history, of course. Then you're going to do your past medical history, surgical history, meds, family history, social history. This is all really important because you can catch things that you totally miss in the history. And then and the review of systems. This is huge. Have a really good review of systems in your head where you're asking at least two or three things for every organ system because you're going to catch things that you missed in your HPI that are really good for a differential diagnosis. That's a really key part of this. And then draw some lines on your piece of paper like this. And up at the top, write differential diagnosis, tests, and exams. And I'm going to show you why this is really helpful. Because previously, I would do a really good history, really thorough history, really thorough exam. And then I'd get to the write-up and be like, shoot, okay, what's my differential now? And you got 10 minutes, and it's way fast. You have to type way fast to get that done. So here's how I do it. During your 15 minutes, you're going to write, you're going to find out this is a you know 23-year-old female who's got stomach pain and nausea and vomiting. And you're taking the history from her. You find out she's got umbilical pain that kind of migrated and now is right lower quadrant pain. All right, you're thinking appendicitis. So you're going to go write appendicitis in that 
differential. You, now you already have something in your mind. You don't have to go back and try and think, wait, what was my differential? What was I thinking? Okay, same thing under the test. Now you're going to write CBC, ultrasound, CT, whatever else you could think of from that list you made previously. And then you may also want to write down exams because when you're done with the history, then you'll be like, okay, these are the exams I need to do on you. And it'll be really quick and fast, very efficient use of your time. Now you may keep taking the history from this person. You find out they have a family history. Both of their parents have Crohn's disease. You're like, okay, well, obviously got to put Crohn's disease on the differential. And then you think, okay, colonoscopy is good for that. I can't think of any other exams. The abdominal exam and the appendix exam is probably good. And then you find out during the review of systems, they got hematuria. And you're like, oh, okay. So it could be nephrolithiasis. It could be something with the kidneys or it could any along those lines. In that case, I'm definitely going to need to order a urinalysis. We could also do another ultrasound of the kidneys, you know, and then, okay, I definitely want to check the CVA tenderness. Now, this is a really abbreviated version of what this would be like, but you get the idea here is that you're writing things down as you're taking the history. It won't take that much time, I promise, but it will help you to organize your thoughts in the moment. For example, if somebody says like, oh, my skin is dry really often, you're like, okay, well, we haven't heard anything about hypothyroidism yet, but I'm just going to write it down just in case. It just helps because then you have a list. And if your differential diagnosis list has five things on it, that's fine. When you get to the write-up, you just have to pick three of them and then defend them. But having them there will save you a lot of time and give you more time to actually think and write this out. Okay, the last thing I would recommend is think or write out loud. And this is what I mean is when you're writing your thing, you don't want to abbreviate it like first aid CS does. That, that's the disadvantage here is you want to think out loud as you're writing this down. So whoever's reading it, whoever's grading you can tell, oh, this person obviously knows what they're talking about. They've, they wrote it all down. So you could, for this case, write down CBC, ultrasound, CT, colonoscopy. All right, there you go. Yeah, those are all things you could definitely order. But to do all of that in a patient would be would be really bad. You're not going to order all of that right at once, right? So you could write this down as a whole paragraph explaining what you're going to do. Oh, I'm going to do this first, and then I'm going to do this. And if the results look like this, then I'm going to do this. But if the results look like that, then I'm going to do that. And the more you think this out loud for that person, the better you're going to be. So these are just a few tips that hopefully will help you do a little bit better on your OSCE. They're things that, like I said, have helped me. Um, with that, good luck. Thanks for learning with The On King. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel here as well as follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or Patreon. That is at On King Med. Also feel free to reach out via email or check out our website, onkingmed.com, for more tips and tricks.